Now, at this point, you might be thinking, oh, come on, really? Is that material derivative really all that useful? You'd be surprised how often you see this type of derivative in different physical settings and situations. So here's one. Let's say that you have temperature changing in the atmosphere. The, the, the wind is blowing, temperature depends on elevation, all that kind of stuff. Let's say that you send up a projectile. I don't know, let's say a weather probe or something like that. And that projectile is measuring the temperature as it moves through the atmosphere. Let's say, a simple example, it's moving along a parabolic path, and we're just going to keep track of um, x and y. Do it that way. That would be a perfectly good way. We're going to say that the x-coordinate is varying linearly in time, and the y-coordinate is changing along some parabolic path. Then, what happens when we uh, look at a temperature field that is also changing? Let's say there's some sort of time periodic component, and then things vary according to the vertical component. Okay, those are two different components here. How would you measure the rate of change of the temperature as experienced by that projectile? by that probe. How does that change over time? Well, this would be the total derivative. We have to compute the partial of f with respect to t, then the partial of f with respect to the space variables times the velocity of that particle's path, dx dt. Okay, so it's pretty easy to compute partial f partial t, right? Just do that, write that down. It gets more interesting when you start doing the derivatives with respect to space, because that's going to be a matrix, right? I take the partial of f with respect to the x variable, that's zero. Then the partial of f, that temperature field, with respect to the y variable, and I get minus uh, that thing that you see there. All that has to be multiplied by the velocity, by dx dt, which is going to be the column matrix given by vx and then vy minus 2 kappa t. Okay, now to simplify this, I have to substitute in for y that function of time that is the particle's path, then I put in that partial f partial t, then I multiply the partial f partial x by dx dt terms. Uh, look, it's it looks kind of nasty. The algebra is not very uh, clean to look at, and this is a really simple 2D example. We haven't really done things fully in 3D, but um, look, this is just the chain rule and it's giving you how the temperature changes as a function of time, as experienced by that weather probe. And now it's time to look into the future to see flow lines and material derivatives, because in volume four, we will return to the material derivative in the context of fields, looking at fluid dynamics and electromagnetics, we will see the material derivative again. But for now, you're just having a dream.